Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Towson stream is now live. Okay, so if you're just tuning in now, this is the going to be Towson University versus George Mason University here in the CSL, the Collegiate Star League. I'm Steven Berger, aka Porky. I'm not joined here yet with my co-caster, Be the Snake. Uh, he should be joining us sometime later if he has the time. Otherwise, it'll just be me. But we are just waiting. Uh, this is just the pre-show. Um, Obviously, on the cast of Towson University, we'll be playing George Mason University, who is five and one in the CSL, and we are only three and three. So hopefully, it'll be a good match. They're the, they're the second best team in our division. Um, we did almost beat UMBC, who's first in our division. So we do we have a chance. We have a good chance. Hopefully, we'll come out on top. Just enjoy some music as we wait here for the games to start. So I guess we'll take a look here at an in-depth view of the first match that should be played. Um, let's see. It's going to be Storzerg against... who's a random player. Ooh, they have... George Mason actually has two random players. We have not seen a random player yet um, in the CSL from what I've been casting. Storzerg versus Ghost. I believe they're both Masters players, so let's see. Yeah, Master player. He only played one game, I guess, in the new season that just came out, or two games. Two games, I guess. Let's see. Let's see. Player for Towson. He's played six games, so he's a Master ranked player as well. Looks like Storzerg won both of his games that he played in the CSL. So they look like they're going to be pretty evenly matched players, just from the standings in the CSL. 
all night, all day, all night, all day, all night, all day. Guess I'm just waiting for somebody from UMBC to con or from uh, not UMBC, GMU to contact me. Not the corner, just. We're just, we're just waiting for the coordinator to log. I thought I saw him come on before. But... Just trying to get the games all set up here. I think we're just waiting for GMU's coordinator to log on. Who do I invite? So I have to invite um, blah. Invite him, invited him, invited him. Jin and Shams. Wait, did I miss Ghost? I did miss Ghost. Ghost. And Jin. I think that's everyone. The game should be starting any moment here. I think I added everybody who I was supposed to.
game should be starting in about the next 10 minutes. Just enjoy the music. Sit back, get yourself some food, and there should be some great games coming up. So like I think the first maps MLG day or GSL daybreak, yeah. So the maps are gonna be GSL daybreak for the first one, MLG is on Naga Caverns for the second one, the 2v2 is gonna be played on Scorched Haven, and then the Last game is going to be paid on MLG and Tika Shipyard, unless there's going to be an ace match. Hopefully there's an ace match, because I mean that's going to be a really close game and obviously more exciting. Spam some of the general chats here. The one good thing about Blizzard chat. Anyone in here? No, no one's in here. Okay. Zerg strategy. Oh, come on. There he goes. Even go. Let's go to the. Let's go to the Spanish ones. Wait, is this the? Are these still the same channels, even though it's the Spanish one? Um, we'll just. Still the same. I oh, know it is a different channel. It's okay. The game should be starting relatively shortly. Still got five minutes till the official four o'clock start time. Yes, we're waiting. Oh. There should be some awesome matches. Um, George Mason is second in our division in the CSL. And we almost beat UMBC, who's first in our division. So should be should be some really good matches. Let's just enjoy this white raw, right raw music mix. Make sure I invited everyone. Two, there should be two, three, like five or six people. Is two not even playing? I think he's playing. Ghost shaped. Yeah, I have them all invited. Okay. In 
down Fifth Avenue Working can't hear at my side You take it everywhere I walk I'm an Englishman in New York <sighs> Got about two minutes and the game should be underway. John's jack o' lantern. Ah, that's pretty good. It's a pretty good jack o' lantern. Star pumpkin. Page not found. Nothing beats page not found. some StarCraft music going on. Get everyone pumped up for the coming match. Let's play on your
Okay, so I guess I'm just waiting on their team to show, or someone from their team. Game should be starting pretty shortly here. I guess just a quick recap of what happened last week. I believe we played the United States Naval Academy and we beat them very easily. Um, if you want to watch the recording of that, it's on our Twitch TV account, which is obviously you're watching our Twitch TV account right now. So there should be an archive um, with last week's game there. It is also on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Towson SC. Um, I have only been uploading like the full one hour, one and a half hour, like the full recording of the event. Um, I've just been really busy lately, and I just haven't had, I just haven't, I just didn't, haven't really want, had the time, I guess, to split to split the recording into the separate games so you don't have to watch all the in-between game stuff. But I'll do that probably later this week or next week and have that all and I'll upload everything to the YouTube and get everything up to date there. But you can watch the full recordings on the YouTube channel. Let's get another StarCraft song going. And if you're just joining us now, I'm Steven Berger, aka Porky, caster for the Towson University StarCraft team. This is the CSL Week 7. We're going to be playing George Mason. In just a few minutes, the game should be starting. First game is on GSL Daybreak. If you want to, f you can also follow me on Twitter at Steven Berger. It's on the screen. Um, I like the bottom corner. Um, I also stream on my own personal Twitch account. I stream World of Warcraft. I started to stream a lot lately since I got my account because their annual pass and free Diablo 3, which is awesome. It's a pretty good deal. Um, I stream StarCraft 2 mainly. I've been trying to stream Battlefield 3, but I've been having some issues with XSplit. So once that's fixed, I'll be streaming Battlefield 3 as well. But you can also just follow me on Twitch.tv, which is twitch.tv slash PorkySC. I don't have a set time when I go online. I usually stream mostly during the weekend. Um, but if you follow me on Twitch or on Twitter, you'll know when I go live. Looks like we're just waiting for one of their... Looks like the last player for GAMU has logged on, I think, so we should be starting in a minute or two.
finding out who's gonna host the matches here. Oh, actually, it looks like stores are just gonna host the match. So we're just getting the first game all set up here. It's gonna be on GSL Daybreak. Should be starting in the minute. I know I've been saying that pretty much every minute. I've been saying it's gonna start a minute later. But now things are getting done. Terrible music. It's t it's tempo. Underline Entertainment. Starcraft songs. Sorry. I can go back to White Rock dance music, or if you have something better, I guess you can. If it's on Spotify, which is like every song in the world, I'll play it. No to what? I don't. Okay, I don't get it. Okay, looks like the game is starting. Okay, I'll mute the music. Music goes off. Starcraft music plays now. Starcraft music is better, I guess. Here we go. Here we go. I remembered to switch over my screens so that my overlay goes away. Loading screen is up. We're just waiting for everyone to load. If you're just joining us, I'm Steven Berger, aka Porky, caster for Towson University StarCraft team. We are going to be playing George Mason right now in the CSL Week 7. First game is going to be on GSL Daybreak, as you can see. Uh, George Mason University is 5 and 1 in the CSL. They are the second best in our division, and we are 3 and 3. Okay, so spawning for George Mason University, we have Storzerg as the blue Terran who plays random. And uh, you can randomly spawn as Terran, even though his name is Zerg, that's okay. Um, Ghost is going to be playing for Towson University, spawning as the green Terran. So it's going to be a Terran vs. Terran on GSL Daybreak. Don't know too much about this map. I've seen it a couple times in GSL. Obviously, it looks like it's going to be a pretty even, it's a pretty fair matchup, or a pretty fair map for Terran vs. Terran. Um, let's see. You have this high ground, which is always good for tanks to sit up here and snipe out things as they come. Looks like Ghost is going to start off his wall off with his power supply. And it looks like Storzerg is not going to be starting off with the wall off. He is going to put that power supply off to the left of his base. It's not too much going on. Looks like Ghost has just sent out his scouting unit and is putting down his first barracks right now. And it looks like Storzerg is also putting down his barracks as well, so a very merry matchup. I think Storzerg was a little bit behind on that barracks placement as opposed to Ghost. And Ghost SCV is going to get out to Storzerg before Storzerg has scoped him out. Um, Ghost also starting his gas right now as well. So it looks like he might be going with some early Marauders. But Storzerg is also going for his gas now, although Ghost is going to have that extra gas a little bit earlier on.
both players getting out their first marines. Now Ghost obviously going to have this first marine out first and it's going to be able to take care of this SCV. Once the SCV gets away, which it's doing right now. So Storzerg was not able to get into the base of Ghost because of that wall off, but Ghost was able to see a lot of what uh, Storzerg was doing. Looks like Storzerg's getting his tech lab right now, so we should be seeing some marauders coming out very shortly. No tech lab or reactor yet for uh, for Ghost. I should be expecting a factory, and there the factory goes down right now. Looks like that marine's gonna force uh, Storzerg's SCV to retreat back to his base. A Reaper is actually being started here, not a Marauder, so we should be able to be seeing some early harassment here from Storzerg, and we'll see if uh, Ghost will be able to hold this off. And it looks like we got the barracks floating away from the ramp with the reactor. I'm thinking it might get switched with this factory. Another barracks is being started for the Ghost as well. And it looks like behind this Reaper rush that looks to be happening from Storzerg, he's also going to be getting his natural expansion here. So it looks like that Reaper is going to be sent out here. We'll see if he can do any damage whatsoever. Um, if Ghost plays this right, he should be able to take it out with his Marines. Um, Tech Lab's being built on the factory right now. Right now, Ghost only has this one Marauder. Or more, sorry, not Marauder. One Marine. We'll see if it can defend against this Reaper that's trying to pull up. Should be another Marine coming out shortly. But that Marine is not going to spot that Reaper. That Reaper is going to get into this... SCV line forcing all the most of the SCVs to be pulled from the mineral line and it's gonna get is it gonna get that one No, okay, it does get one SCV, but the Marines are gonna be able to chase it off So it, so Storzerg's little Reaper that pushed up was able to cause Ghost to lose some mining time and was able to take one SCV Although it looks like it still might be trying to do some do something before it dies It's gonna hop up start attacking this power supply but the, Marauder, but the Marines are going to be taking it out. And it looks like the second base for Storzerk has finished. And it looks like he's going to be building a defensive bunker here. Transferring SCVs over. We got two siege tanks being put out. One for Storzerk and one for Ghost. Both pretty much around the same power or same food count. Ghost is a little bit ahead here. Siege mode is being researched for both players. Another barracks coming down for... Uh, Storzer. Storzer is going to send a, send a, um, a scan here and he is going to see that factory and the barracks here. <sighs> looks like siege mode is about halfway done for both players. And it looks like Ghost is going to be sending up a little bit of a push here. He has these siege tank and, S and Mar marines. By the time he gets to um, Storzerg's base, he will have siege mode, but so will Storzer. But Storzerg does not have many marines here. Um, Ghost might be able to do a little bit of damage here. This bunker, though, is going to look is going to be pretty nasty for Ghost to deal with. But we'll see what he decides here. Looks like he might be going all in with this attack. There's a bunch of SCVs on their way over, as well as some other reinforcements. We'll see if Ghost can do any damage here with this upcoming push. And it looks like those siege tanks is gonna. There you go. Sorry, I have my sound. Disabled for that. That siege tank is going to be right outside that bunker. That bunker is doing no damage whatsoever. It's going to be killed unless Storzerg salvages it. It looks like that salvage is going to be able to get done in time. And the marines were pulled from it. And we got siege tank versus siege tank here. We got a bunch of SCVs working to repair that siege tank. Looks like Storzerg is going to be in a little bit of trouble here. We got more, more reinforcements on their way for Ghost. Food counts very close. The starport is also on its way for ghosts. Maybe some medevacs. Maybe some banshees. Maybe some vikings. Maybe some battle cruisers. We won't know until then. Looks like that siege tank for Storzerg is in the range of ghosts. And ghost is in trouble. One siege tank goes down. The other one goes down. And ghost marines are forced to be pulled back here. The CV is being pulled back as well. Looks like Vikings are going to be coming out of that starport for Ghost. Ghost still has not expanded. Yet. He should want to expand very shortly here, or else he's going to be very, very far behind economically. <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me. We got floating barracks here for Storzerg. We got more siege tanks coming out for Storzerg. Looks like Storzerg's getting ready for a third base here. His third base starting to build in his main, uh, main base. Armory is being put down for Storzer. And it looks like Ghost is finally going to be taking his natural expansion here. A little bit later than he should have. I think he should have been expanding bef expanding while he made that initial push. But he will be getting his expansion up very shortly. But the problem with that is that Storzer is now going to be another base ahead because Storzer will be on his third base by the time Ghost is on his second. So Storzer is looking very, very nicely economic wise. Take a look at the units tab here for a little bit. We got Storzerk has two mules, 47 SCVs, seven siege tanks, and five marines. Whereas Ghost has 30 SCVs, so Ghost is behind on SCV count. Two Vikings, no mules, two S two siege tanks, and 19 marines. Looks like Ghost's going to be taking control of the Zelnaga Tower here. Ghost second base is finally about to be completed. Vikings are going to try and take down the scouting barracks here. But they're going to be forced to retreat because Storzer just has a kind of a nasty army here. Although it looks like Ghost is going to try and sneak them behind the back to deal with this mineral line. But there are missile turrets. And those are going to force Ghost to go back to his base. But Storzer are going to be able to take down one Viking. Banshee also on its way out for Ghost. Don't think there's cloak out yet. Cloak is being researched by Ghost, so shortly there should be cloak banshees. Stores are way ahead on food count right now, and he's also moving that third base that he built over to its mineral deposit. He will be very ahead economically, and he is also starting to make Thors here, and those are going to tear through those Vikings. Stores are also getting vehicle weapons level one as well. Ghost not mining efficiently out of that second base, only has one SCV, has not done any SCV transfers. Okay, two mules are going down right now. He's making a ton of SCVs, but no transfers. Looks like another factory is being built here by Ghost. Looks like Ghost is just trying to build up his army and an economy here before he attacks, while Storzerg is just looking very nicely right now. Storzerg is also making a starport here. So see if he decides to go Vikings as well, or go into Cloak Banshees, which is what Ghost has been transitioning into. A couple of siege tanks in siege mode around the middle of the base here for Ghost. Nice defense. Scan goes down for Storzerg. He sees this entire army. He is pushing out here. We'll see if he can do any damage. He has a very nasty army. Way ahead on food count. Storzerg's army comprises of three Thors, ten siege tanks, and five marines. Ghost only has one Viking, six siege tanks, and 22 marines. So Storzerg looks to be fairly ahead if he can siege mode those tanks up very in a good formation here. He should be able to do some huge damage. Looks like stores are building some missile turrets around the map, getting some vision as well as some defense. Inching those siege tanks up ever so closely. Kills one unit. More Vikings coming out for Ghost. And it looks like stores are while he attacks here, he is going to be getting up to a fourth base here. He's also getting in, uh, he's also getting blue flame for Hellions, although I haven't seen any Hellions. He does not have any hell Hellions out. Interesting. Um, yeah. So he's going to be another base ahead. So while Storzerg is taking his fourth, Ghost is taking his third. Storzerg is just doing a phenomenal job of keeping in the economic lead. And it looks like Ghost is trying to push forward here as well. Will he? He is going to miss this army. Both armies are not going to see each other. Although Ghost has this scouting barracks here. Both players are directly across from each other. When will the attack happen? And it looks like Ghost Storzer also getting his fifth base up here. He's just expanding and expanding. He's got sixth base going on here. He's just keeping that economic lead. Do they see each other? Okay, Ghost does not see Storzerg's army. And Storzerg did not does not see Ghost's army. So both players 
don't know each other are there. And we're just waiting for the attack to happen. When will it happen? Nobody knows. And it looks like Storz or, or Ghost, sorry, is moving over his third base now. But it's not going to really matter because Storzerg is on about one, two, three, four, five, six bases, I can count. Storzerg just has a huge economy. And it looks like Ghost is also going to be putting down his fourth base here as well. We're just waiting for stuff to happen. Take a look at their unit tab. The Storzerg has four throwers, 17 siege tanks, three Hellions, and five Marines. Ghost has five Vikings, 15 siege tanks, and 20 Marines. So as far as numbers go, Ghost has a very big army. Um, but Storzerg does have the Thors um, to combat against those Vikings. But he does have more Marines. The the amount of the amount of what was I totally lost what I was gonna say. Amount of tension, that's right. The amount of tension in this match very strong right now. Both players directly across from each other, still not attacking. Looks like both players are just building up their economy, getting a huge amount of bases. We got two more star ports coming down for Storm Zerg. His blue flame is almost done. More siege tanks coming out for Ghost. Oh, and it looks like Storzer just went down. He does detect that base. It looks like some units were destroyed from Ghost here. So Ghost is going to sense this. It looks like Storzer is going to wait for his 200-200 and push. It looks like Storzer has an army on the left side of the map as well as pushing on the right side. Siege Toad goes down. And it's going to be able to take down all these siege tanks. Ghost not looking very nice right here. Looking like he's going to be in trouble. Cloak is being researched for Storzerg as well as Mobius Reactors. Infantry weapons level 1 is being researched for Ghost and those Vikings almost got taken down there. Scan goes down. Siege tanks for Ghost are going to be able to take down those Hellions very easily. Do some damage to those Thors. And four stores are going to push back a little bit. There's a raven out for stores are. Stores are putting down missile turrets all around the map. Looks like stores are might be getting ready to do a little bit of a back push here. Go through this mineral deposit through here. But it looks like Ghost is going to be sending some Vikings. Nope, he is not. Four more starports on their way for Storzerg. Storzerg is definitely transitioning to a very heavy air combat here. Storzerg is going to see these Vikings coming in. Is he going to get that one Viking? It's so close. No! This ghost is going to siege mode his tanks. And Storzerg losing a huge amount of siege. Uh, losing a huge amount of siege because they weren't in siege mode, but now they are. They are doing some huge damage. Ghost also has some huge siege tanks. He just siege mode them though. They are on the wrong side. He only has one siege tank in range of these and it's just dead. Ghost taking huge damage on his third base here. Or fourth base. I lost count of how many bases he both players have. Looks like Ghost trying to expand. Is that expansion going to get up in time before Ghost gets attacked by Storzerg's units? Point defense drone goes out. One Viking almost down again. Looks like Ghost is going to be able to hold off this attack, but Storzerg attacking to the other base with the rest of his Thors here. Although, note, Storzerg still has all these siege tanks up over here on this side of the map. Thespian Gas Guys is going to go down. This base looks like it's going to be going down as well. But there's another base here to quickly lift up and hopefully get out of the way of these units from stores or girls that's gonna get taken out too looks like scan goes down for ghost he's gonna see the entire army of stores that's over here it looks like we got a battle cruiser coming out for stores that's gonna do very well against ghost vikings still putting mules out that base 
looks to be almost dead. Looks like we've got the raven here, just kind of chilling out. Getting some nice scouting here. Point defense drone goes. Marissal turret sorry, goes down. Gets taken out by the siege tanks. That Thor finally got taken out by Ghost. Battle cruiser is almost done for Storzerg. And it looks like Storzerg's gonna be able to take down that third or fourth base of Ghost. And that base is gonna lift up, although he's just gonna move it over here. Why? Don't do that! Please, don't do that. Okay, he's not. Okay. <laughs> oh no, wait, but it's still gonna be in range of those tanks. Okay, not anymore. That's good. Oh no, wait, but he's moving it back over there. Okay. I guess that's really all he can really. He can't move it to anywhere on this bottom half or over here, so he's kind of. Ghost is kind of secluded to this top right of the map. Although Ghost is now ahead in food count. That Vikings might be able to take down that. Okay, he took down that point defense drone. And it looks like Ghost is going to be pushing up here, but there's a bunch of siege tanks in siege mode here, and Ghost is going to get teared down. Thors are moving in for Storzerg. Going to be able to deal with that barracks, although those siege tanks are in siege mode, doing some huge damage. One Thor goes down, and that other Thor is going to go down very easily, but he did take down two uh, siege tanks as well. And it looks like five more battle cruisers are out for Storzerg. Both players sitting on a huge amount of money. Ghost is sitting on 6.1k minerals. Storzerg sitting on 4.1k as well as 3.2k gas. Storzerg was able to take down the rest of Ghost's siege tanks that were up here. Although the Ghost is reinforcing here because he senses and knows. I think he sees those siege tanks up there. Ghost does see those siege tanks up there. So he knows what's going down. It looks like Ghost is going to be making a push here. Should be able to take that base down. Wait, a nuke! A nuke is going down! Is that going to be able to defend Ghost? Get out of there! Get out of there! Okay, nice. He did get away with that nuke. That nuke is going to kill absolutely nothing. Good job, Ghost. If, if Ghost... if Wow. If, if, if that nuke hit Ghost's army, that would be very, very bad. Ghost is moving up here. There's no defense of Storzerg. All Storzerg's units are up here by Ghost's base, so Ghost is going to be able to do some huge damage here. These tanks goes into siege mode. Take down those destructible rocks. One tank goes down from Zerk, from Ghost. Although Ghost is kind of wasting his army here. Battle cruisers are coming. Those battle cruisers are going to be doing huge amounts of damage, and I don't think Ghost is going to be able to defend against these battle cruisers. Stores are now very well ahead. 182 food to 114. And those battle cruisers are going to be able to clean up those siege tanks as well as those doors from Ghost. Take a little look at the units tab here. Two nukes are out for Storzerg. Four marines, 21 tanks, five ghosts, six battle cruisers, and one raven. Very nasty army, and Ghost really has absolutely nothing here. I mean, he really just has the 10 siege tanks. So it looks like Storzerg might be able to win it, and Ghost just GG. <laughs> and it looks like George Mason. Sadly, oh, whoops, is going to be taking game one. A full screen? Don't don't tell me I forgot to change. I'm pretty sure I changed my overlay. Don't tell me I didn't change my overlay. I changed that overlay. I checked exploit. Don't don't tell me I just wrecked that entire full screen. I changed it. It was full screen. Don't tell me it wasn't full screen. Does someone want to verify for me? Was 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 that game on full screen? Cause that would be the second time I did that. Okay. Okay, thank you. So it looks like my co-caster is going to be coming in now. Hello. Hello. How's it going? 
pretty good. How are you? I'm doing fine. I just caught the the tail end of that uh, that last game there. Nice. It was pretty good. Seemed like it. Hey everybody, if you're just joining us, George Mason has taken down, sadly, has beaten Towson for game number one. But we got another game coming up, so don't go anywhere. I'm Steven Berger, aka Porky, one of the casters here for Towson University. You can follow me on Twitter at Steven Berger, or you can also follow me on my personal Twitch TV account, twitch.tv slash PorkySC. And right now, I am here with... Like the freeze, aka be the snake, your other co caster. We should be getting ready for game two here shortly. Indeed. I need a invite to the uh, Oh right, I have to invite you to the chat the yes. chat then. Indeed. Okay, and it looks like game two is gonna be VGA and Field against Shake and Bake. So Protoss vs. Terran on MLG Zelnaga Caverns. Very interesting map when playing as a Protoss because there are those choke points that Protoss like to use to put proxies. The one? Nine. We can go back out. Okay, let me suggest you, and let's, hopefully they'll add you here. Okay, they should be getting an invite. There we go. Okay, and it looks like the game should be getting ready here. The countdown goes down. Anticipation screen incoming. Excuse me. Okay, so it looks like we got VGA Enfield spawning as the orange Protoss here for George Mason in Game 2 of the CSL Week 7, Towson University vs. George Mason, MLG Zelnaga Caverns. And then spawning for Towson University, we got Shake and Bake as the Red Terran. Let's so I don't know too much about VGA Enfield, but Shake and Bake seems to be, seems to like his uh, siege tanks and marines and some marauders early on and eventually getting his medevacs out. Um, I think that's pretty much all we've seen from him so far. Um, so obviously he just likes that very, um, I guess it's mech style of play. Seems pretty basic so far. Yeah, but looks like Shaking Bake putting down his power supply to block off his mineral deposit here. He doesn't usually wall off from what I've seen. 
So pretty standard, it looks like VGA and Field putting down his pylon. We'll see if he decides to take advantage of these choke points here. Because a lot of Protoss, especially in Protoss versus Protoss, um, they'll put the proxy over here and try and spawn units in the choke. Gateways now down for uh, I'll just I'm just gonna call him Field. Yeah, it seems like the easiest thing to do. Wow, scout at like the exact same time. No high five though. Not showing any love. This time. I'm just gonna actually turn you up a little bit. I think you're a little quiet. Yeah. I think I can turn myself up if you want me to. No, I got it. Okay. Okay, and it looks like the cybernetics cord's gonna be going down as well. Orbital for Shake and Bake. Tech Lab's going down on Shake and Bake's uh, barracks. Gas being put out for, or gas has been made out for field. First Marine's out for Shake and Bake, as well as the Zealot's now out for field and Shake and Bake starting his Marauders. Oh, and it looks like field's gonna be going for an early expansion here. That's gonna put him very well ahead for economics, or for his economy. But Shake Big will be able to, if he decides to make an early push, that should do some good damage. The chrono boost. Oh, that he's was not a waste. <laughs> yeah, he's not chronoing that warp gate. Oh, it takes so long to do warp gate. It does. I always, sometimes I miss that first chrono boost on it, and it really, really annoys me. Second gate going down. We'll see if Shake and, or we'll see if Field decides to do a two gate robo or a three gate robo. Maybe not a robo at all. And it looks like Shaking Big's gonna be pushing here with a couple of Marauders and two Marines. Field does not have too much against this. Those Marauders are. Those Marauders are horrible to deal with for Stalkers. So she can make, might be able to do some damage here. This is true. And it looks like we've got three gates going down for Field. Field also transferring his probes over. Here it comes, those Marauders attacking that Nexus, and a bunker goes down as well. Two bunkers. Those Stalkers are coming down to try and do some damage. One Stalker goes down. Marauders, OP. Not really, but. Had Zelt's gonna go down as well. Does he have Field to looking to be in already? Oh my goodness, he does. Field is looking to be in some deep trouble here. Probes are being pulled into the choke here, trying to get away as fast as they can. And that Nexus looks like it's gonna be taken down. We still have those two bunkers outside of his base. Third bunker going down as well. That Nexus is so close to dying, if Shake and Bake can get this down, that's going to be huge for him. He can kite these zealots all day with the shells, too. And it looks like Field has stopped producing units. Probes are coming down to try to attack. Units are in the bunkers for Shake and Bake, and they're just, doing, they're just tearing through these probes. He really needs to have this SCP repair. Oh, there it goes. That SCV's almost dead though. No reinforcements are coming in for Shake and Big, which is interesting, but he does get that in that Nexus. Okay. Now it looks like all the bunkers will be savaged. Salvaged. So Shake and Big, very good job of not committing, over committing to that. He took down the Nexus, which is what I think he wanted to do. And now he's retreating back and just gonna, just gonna go back to doing what he's doing. Cause now that hurt field very, very much. I mean, if we just look at how many mineral he has, minerals he has right now, he only has like around 70, not even 100. 
And not to mention, he lost 400 minerals from creating that nexus. That's true. If we take a look at the units lost tab, units lost for field have been 19, and the resources lost was 1750, whereas Shakabig only lost 6 units and 535 minerals or resources, and he's moving over to his second base now. So now, Shakabig is looking like he's going to be very well ahead. Looks like Field gonna try and take back his sec his natural expansion here. I think that's all he really can do right now. He needs the amount of he needs those minerals back. But it looks like he might be trying to do a little bit of an advancement here. He is pushing to that mineral mid Zelnaga Tower. Well, I think even if he does push, he does have force he does have a bunch of sentries out, so those are gonna do nicely to try and protect his stalkers against those marauders, but he only has one stalker out, so I don't think he's going to be able to do too much if he decides to push. A lot of sentries. This is interesting. He does have a couple zealots too, so those those will do some damage to those marauders. Looks like Field is going to be pushing here. Going to catch Factory those scout. starports out as well. Looks like Field's gonna be able to take down those two Marines, but he Field is Stim still. Stim is almost done, so. Alright, oh, that's gonna help Shake and Big greatly. Looks like that second base for Field is finally finished. Starting to produce probes, and probe transfer is heading over. It looks like Field might be trying to push in through the choke. He does not have a proxy there, though. Interesting. Does not, but that will catch Shake and Bake off guard. I'm pretty sure. That will, but I would like to see a proxy there, though. He's not going to be able to reinforce this army at all, unless he's just not committing to it. It looks like a SCV has been sent into Field's base by Shake and Bake, but Field catching Shake and Bake's army off guard going to force Field only that. Okay, force Field both sides. SCVs go down. Stim. Oh, great force fields. They let the, the stalkers and uh, sentries survive, yeah, but that's about it. Yeah, all those zealots did get taken out. And it looks like Shake and Bake knows that main oh, what field's is he doing? army. Oh, why did you push? He has nothing to defend himself with. Yeah, I think that's why Shake and Bake's just taking a great, great lead now, because Shake and Bake knows that field's main army is down here at his base. Shaken is gonna do, I guess, a base trade here. But Shaken just has the bigger army. Shaken moving in here, gonna be able to take down this Nexus very easily. And we'll see if Field decides to push back. And it looks like Field is retreating. He's supply block though. I think this might be GG. I uh, would surprise me. And there it is. Get so Towson tying it up. Okay, if you are just joining us now, this was just game two of the CSL Week 7, Towson vs. George Mason University. I'm Steven Berger. You can follow me on Twitter at Steven Berger. Or you can also follow me on my Twitch TV account where I personally stream games as much as I can, which is twitch.tv slash porkysc. And as always, I am joined here with... Blake Freeze, a.k.a. Be the Snake. And game 3 should be starting very shortly. It will be a 2 vs. 2 match on... It will be on... Scorched Haven. I don't know too much about 2v2 maps.
Huh. That's interesting. There's, I have a program running called ESN Sonar Host Application. I have absolutely no idea what that is, but apparently I'm hosting Sonar? Uh, that, that, that does not make any... <laughs> That's, I don't know what that is. Take a look at the lineup. Some... Let me try and figure out what that is. Well, that's complete. I don't need to see that. Whatever. Yeah, sonar host. Oh, apparently it's something for Battlefield 3. Oh, yeah, did you get Battlefield 3? I did not. Not it yet. Is, it is a very good game. Doesn't surprise me. Did you get it for uh, PC? Of course. Uh, Only way to play see. games is PC. Debatable when it comes to Battlefield 3 because Origin is a hunk of poop. It is, but but um, like they scaled down the game so much for PS3 and Xbox. Like I'm sure they did. Yeah, like I know for the 360. Well, instead of like for PC, you can have up to 64 players. I think um, PS3 and Xbox only have either 32 or 24, but I know for um, because Xbox 360 uses normal DVDs as opposed to Blu-ray, so obviously they have they have limited storage, so they couldn't put the HD textures for the game on the 360 DVD. Like you have to download them from somewhere, I think. Hmm. So I thought that was pretty funny. The 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 single player. Not gonna spoil anything for everybody, but it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Is a uh, is our uh, TSL? Is it uh, best of five? No, it's best of three. Okay. I'm actually see uh, here at Towson. We have our own Towson Star League for people in the Towson University. And I think. I am undefeated right now, I think. I think I'm, uh... I don't remember the website for that. To see the scores. But I think I beat... I've beaten both of my players that I've played against. I haven't against. even played my first game yet. <laughs> every time I try to, he's not available. Yeah, I haven't played... I think I kind of skipped my... My uh, game last week, I messaged the guy, but he never—he contacted me like two days ago. I don't know if we're actually gonna play or not. But I, so far, I'm undefeated. But I don't—I think I have a bye week next week. So. Oh man, might be a PVP. PVP, PVP, PVP. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> I think I might have done too many P's there, but it's okay. Face of the devil, actually, the my opponent is uh, actually watching the stream right now. Even though he goes to the same school as I do. Who is? Uh, Drew. He's watching the stream. Ah. Oh. Indeed. Oh yeah, I did hear about that. Apparently the the sonar program is EA, EA's origin spyware. Did hear about that? <coughs> so game three should be getting underway pretty soon. I think uh, George Mason is trying to find a substitute for their two versus two match. So we have a uh, tuna and gin for our two players, but I'm not sure who they're putting in because I don't know who's uh. Yeah, well, on uh, on the CSL site it says that there's Korok, I guess is how you pronounce it, and Carpola. We're not um, sure who's uh. I think Korok replaced. is the one they're trying to replace.
Because Carpola's in the chat, so. Seems like one of their players has a broken arm and cannot play, so... I'd still play with a broken arm. <laughs> it depends which hand it is. You don't need it. The whole point is now you're not supposed to use the mouse, right? So you really just need one hand. Well, that'd be a very interesting game to play without the mouse. There's actually, there's actually a player who I've seen stream. He's a paraplegic and he plays with pencils or like pointing sticks. And he's like gold or something. I don't know that if you ever. I don't know if anyone has ever seen that. Get better at this game. It was pretty interesting. Interesting to watch. Ooh, so. If anyone wants to know, Arcade Casting has a 20% off EA coupon. I think I got that too, but I think I deleted the email for it. 20% off what? Off the, uh, like, the EA store. Oh, it, it was a random thing. Is that for the Halloween, the trick-or-treat thing? It was, like, it anywhere from 5 to 100% off? Oh, yeah, I did get an email. That might have been it. Yeah, but you couldn't buy, like, Battlefield with it, so... Uh. It was useless. And plus, mine was only, <laughs> of course, mine was the five percent. You know, <laughs> I didn't even. I didn't even. I just deleted the email. So far, it looks like they're not going to be... Oh no, I think they did find a second player right there. So I guess I'm making the game. Let me make sure I get the map right. And I'll scorch cave in. Go away. Scorch station. Oh yeah. Scorch cave. Scorched Haven. There we go. Player, okay, you. Who else gets added here? Oh, wait, but I don't have them added to. Oh, no, wait, I don't need that. Wait to gain. Oh, he's already in it. Um, invite to game. This was my newest uh, patient I was building last time. It's like a church. Oh god, so many people are... Don't know who they're just subbing. Oh, sacred system is fine.
I'm ready. There, so Towson team is ready. Is there anyone? Guess I'm just waiting for George Mason to say they're ready. Should be starting here any minute. This will be game three of the Towson vs. George Mason CSL match. Game is now tied one to one. And game will be starting. <coughs> okay, and here we go. Anticipation screen is up. Game three will be underway here on Scorch Haven. A two versus two map and match. <laughs> Come on. Okay, and spawning here for Towson University, we got Jin playing as the Green Protoss here at about the one o'clock position. Spawning as the Pink Zerg, we have Tuna for Towson University at about the three o'clock position. Actually, we'll say four o'clock. And we got Carpola spawning as the Yellow Protoss here at about the nine o'clock position, and then. Sacred System spawning as the purple Protoss for George Mason at about the 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock position. And it'll be interesting to see what Towson decides to do here just because it's pretty much a Protoss, 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 and then one Zerg. PvP, PvP, be easy. Correct. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Um,. I would say that uh, Tuna might be going just like early something, early Roaches, early Zerg or something, if George Mason decides to go like, I don't know, tech up to early De Dark Templar or go to the four gate because they're going to want to either be really offensive early on or kind of push back a little bit. We know Zerg has good early aggression, that's, that's for sure. So it looks like Jin does have a did have a scout into George Mason's Protoss player's base. Tuna as well has a drone in there. Sacred putting down his first gateway a little bit later compared to the other two Protoss players. And it looks like Jin is not going to be going for early pressure. He is going to be expanding here. Interesting choice. Yeah, probably 14 pool or 14. Expand. Yeah, the the pool just went down at 14. <coughs> but it looks like Carpola is gonna spot that, so he doesn't know that it's down there. Although I don't know if did they. Carpola did not scout. Okay, he's just about to scout the expansion now, so he does know about that. Cybernetics core going down for both Jin and Carpola, and the other Protoss, uh, Sacred. Second gas being put on for Jin. Zealot is about to be on its way out for Sacred. Second expansion for Tuna is almost done here. And Carpola scouting around with this probe. Jin is not doing anything about it. Although his Jin Zealot is, or Stalker, not going any Zealot first, going Stalker first instead. Interesting. I guess that explains his very early second gas that he got. Yeah. Because he's still only one, he's about, to, oh, he looks like he might be taking up to Dark Templars. Twilight Council is going down now. Oh, yay! I love this kind of play. And he's it looks like... What was that? I got all giddy inside. <laughs> oh yeah, I can tell by your voice. 
Looks like J Artuna is going to be researching Metabolic Boost. And two more gateways are going down for Carpola. Looks like Carpola is going to be going four gate, or at least the three gate. Maybe a Robo? Oh! Three gate DTs, please. No DTs. Blink is being researched. I am sorry. Darn. That still doesn't mean that he's not going to get Dark Templars. That is very true. So you can still you can still have something alive inside you. A little hope. I always have hope. Because you and I have both seen in in these games people go Dark Templars. Very oh yeah, I think. Early. Oh yeah, I think pretty much not. almost every two v two game we've seen here in the CSL has been has had Dark Templars in some way, shape, or form. This is true. And it looks like Sacred's going to be having a Robo Bay. And it's putting down two more gates as well. Twilight Council going down for Garpola too. I don't want to see them get it though. <laughs> <laughs> Although since, well, he does have the two gateways, so they might be going, have more of a chance of getting the Dark Templars. Two more gate, or one more gateways on its way for Jin. Got a little push going on here. Well, we'll see if this will be able to do any sort of damage. George Mason's moving out here. Towson seems to be having a decent army here, although those Zerglings are way too far away from the Stalkers for Towson. We'll see if they'll be able to push this off or hold this off. That's a lot of Zerglings. Oh my goodness. That is, if they can catch you, if they can catch George Mason off guard here, they're gonna go in front. Oh <laughs> god! <laughs> Trying to beat uh, George Mason back to their base, I guess. Look at this. Look at this cheese. Zerglings are going in. Immortals on its way out for Sacred. Will it come out in time? Are they going to be able to stop it? The Immortals going to come out. All probes are going to be pulled for Sacred. Oh, oh, what is going on? Why is the Immortal walking away? Going the on? Zergling Zealots are going to get taken. Oh no, wait, those Zealots are going to fight off all the Zerglings, but the Stalker is going to go down. Going on. Oh, it looks uh -oh. like those Zerglings are going to be getting caught here. I'll like say they're going to be taken out. Although that was okay, a very nice way by Towson to try and stop that push, and it did stop yeah, George Mason quicker. from pushing. Towson looks like they might come out in front here. The Stalkers for Carpola are just not going to have enough of of, uh, of numbers deal with Towson here. Towson does have blank. Oh, they both have blank now. Oh, but it looks like Jin is going to take get rid of Carpola's stalker count here. It looks like Carpola's going to be in some huge trouble. Oh, yeah. Go, Zerklings, go! Looks like we also got Zerglings into Sacred's base here. Trying to take down those Zolts. Looks like Carpola is going to get overrun here by Stalkers. I think Carpola might give up here. All probes are being sent out. Zerglings go into uh, Sacred's base here. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of that's a lot of probes. Looks like Jordan Mace is not in good standing here. Yellow has eight supply right now. Carpola has two supply now. <laughs> and it's all in that one stalker. <laughs> See you later. Play down. I think we should be seeing a GG here at some point. Only Sacred does have his base still up and running, but he does not have much. I mean, he has a huge amount of Zealots, and there's two I, Immortals. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not exactly sure why he's going Immortals against this team. Yeah, I don't know either. I think because, I mean, um, like Zerglings, Zealots, and Stalkers can handle Zerglings so easily. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, if he was going Roches, yeah, I'd see Immortals, but... Yeah, it looks like 12 oh Mutals. Oh my god, <laughs> Mutals, oh Jesus. 
Yeah, those oh. immortals are going to be taken out by those <laughs> mutilisks. Send in the mutas. Looks like Jin is going to take his gold expansion here. Looks like they're just going to build up their army until uh, so they're both ready to attack here. Carpola has been totally taken out. All he has left is this pylon and this gas. So right now it's just sacred against the entire Tassa team. Oh, he has three gateways. That's... Yeah, I think they just might be waiting for the Mutalisks to get all settled in. And then they might start to push here. It looks like Tuna's going to be taking his third, or he has taken his third, and he will be taking his fourth very shortly. Oh, here come the Mutas. Meow. Nice sound effect. Yeah, I try. <laughs> and he has nothing to do, he has nothing against that, except for the three stalkers. Oh yeah, these of us should be able to single-handedly take this down. There they go, the stalkers are going to get taken down very easily, and those immortals are not going to be able to do absolutely anything. They can take a lot of damage from them, but that's about the, that's about the extent of it. That's true, it looks like Harpo's going to say GG. Sacred says GG. And it is a Towson <laughs> in the lead. So Towson just won game three. I believe we have to play one more, or I could be totally wrong. I believe if we have to play one more match, which I think we do. We do, indeed. Okay, it'll be one. on... Yeah. It'll be on MLG Antigua Shipyard. It'll be Fake Promise playing for George Mason against Shams playing for Towson University. If George Mason wins this, they will force an ace match. If they do not, then Towson will beat George Mason. That will be really big for us because George Mason is second in our division. So, it'll be very awesome. And the only the only team that George Mason lost to is UMBC, and we lost to him too. But we we did almost beat UMBC. We almost beat UMBC. Almost. So we do have a chance. We do indeed. Okay, so it looks like we're just waiting here for the next game to start. Don't know if I'm supposed to make it or not. I do not see their player, the fake promise guy, in the chat. So if you are just joining us, this is the Collegiate Star League, Week 7, Towson University versus Georgia Mason. I'm one of the casters for Towson University, Steven Berger, a.k.a. Porky. You can follow me on Twitter, at Steven Berger. You can also follow my personal Twitch.tv account, which is Twitch.tv slash PorkySC, which is where I stream many, many a games. And I'm always, as always, I'm here with... 
like to freeze, aka be the snake. You can't follow me on anything because you don't get that privilege. Shame on you. I don't. I mean, I would make the game, but I don't see fake promise in the chat. <laughs> this is MLG Antigua Shipyard. There it is. Okay. Um, who's playing for us? I had it up before. Shams, right? I hope. Did I invite him into? Okay. Okay, there he is. Light to game. Uh, they can go down here. And the amount of spectators has increased significantly. Oh no. Someone's gonna have to go. Oh no, wait. Wait, someone's gonna have to leave. <laughs> we have filled up all the spectator slots. There we go. Now we have enough room. <laughs> Okay, it looks like game is going to be starting. Okay, this is going to be game number three. If George Mason wins this, it will force an ace match. If George Mason loses, Towson will win the series and win this week's CSL match. Okay, and we have Fake Promise spawning as the Purple Zerg for George Mason at about the 5 o'clock position. And spawning for Towson University, we have the Red Protoss Shams spawning at about the 11 o'clock position here on MLG Antigua Shipyard in game number 4 of the CSL Week 7. Towson University versus George Mason. The series right now is 2-1 to one, Towson 
Lost the first game, but then won the second game. And the 2v2 match. So we'll see who decides to win this match. Looks like Shams is putting down that first that first pylon in a wall off formation. Big promise sending out that overlord. It looks like Shams is not going to be going with the Forge Fast Expand. He does put down that first gateway right now. And it looks like Fake Promise is going gas first. I'm assuming that's going to be spawning pool then. Yep, and you should be able to, hopefully once that, or well not, not hopefully, because it's for the other team, but once his spawning pool finishes, he... He might be able to make metabolic boost. <laughs> Shams taking his first gas now too. And Shams is gonna scout um, Fake Promise here first, so he is gonna see the spawning pool right here. So he should be anticipating some sort of zergling thing to happen. Cybernetic score going down for Shams to complete that wall off. No Zealot yet. Shams just getting some huge scouting here. There was nothing to force him out of that base. Looks like he might just be trying to scout out an expansion that might happen shortly. Looks like Metabolic Boost has started here, and six Zerglings are on their way out. And Shams has nothing to stop this. His Zealot's going to be a little way too late here. He does not have enough food to build it. And there it is. Getting started now, but those six Zerglings might be able to do some damage if they decide to push up here. Shams is just does not have much here at all, and Fake Promise starts his second expansion. Here they come. The Zergs are going to push to the center of the map, and they're going to get to Shams' base right when that speed finishes. And all he has is one Zealot to... oh boy. One Zealot against six Zerglings this is not going to be good. Zerglings are going to go in. Speed is just about done. Is he not paying attention? I don't think so. What? What is? I don't know. What is he doing? Attack! What, what the hell? <laughs> go! CFK? Was... Quickly, what three gates are thrown down, but that's not going to be enough. Zerglings get into the base. Warp gate is finished, so these are going to be able to warp in units. We'll see if Shams can try and hold us off, and it looks like oh, he is. Weird. Wow, that was weird. Almost lost that gateway there. Almost lost it. Oh, but it looks like as this was happening, Shams had a proxy over here, and he's warping in Zealots down, at, down by Fake Promise's base. Front row. He has no units to defend himself, does he? No, I don't think he does. Oh, three spine crawlers coming up though. See, those elves will be able to take down those spine crawlers. No stalkers are being warped in though. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Ten zerglings on their way. Chance, they're just, they're just going around in circles. Just attack the lair or pathway, whatever. Will Shams be able to get down this hatchery before anything pops? Zerglings are popping, but they're going back up to the main base here. Stalkers are going to get caught off guard. Looks like Shams might be able to break free of this. I was like Sham actually might be able to win it right here. What the heck? That was a, quite a turnaround. And a very quick one at that. Looks like that second base is going to be able to go down. Could this be a win? Those Zerglings are like, 
check this out, I'm gonna destroy their entire base. Bunch of proxies here for shams. Or be in ton of units. And there it is, GG! Halston has won! We just did it! Yeah. have just beaten George Mason, the second best team in the division. They are now 5-2. and two, And we are now 4-3. and three. Hey, hey, suck it. Great games. Great games. So anyway, if you guys are just joining us, I am sorry. Because the games are over. Towson has won CSL Week 7 against George Mason University. 3-1. But you can join us next week. Same time, or, same place. Actually, no. It's different time, same place. Different time, correct. It'll be November next week, 2 o'clock Eastern two Standard Time. What is this nonsense? Against John's Hop. Oh, wait. You want to know why? Hold on. Yeah. Is it next week? Next week's like daylight savings time. Really? So I think it's like... I think so. Do we lose an hour or do we gain an hour? I don't know. Cause I got all, I thought I thought yesterday was daylight savings time because I saw it on someone's Twitter. Except then I realized that he was from London, and they said that it was going back an hour. So I I don't understand daylight savings time. It's totally pointless. But on the CSL website it says two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. November 6th. I think that's still a Sunday. Yeah. He's all just be waking up. <laughs> yeah, Windows 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 says daylight saving time ends on Sunday, November 6th, 2 a.m. The clock is set to go back an hour. Woo. Got some extra sleep in us. Yay. But that'll be against Johns Hopkins University. As always, I'm Steven Berger, a.k.a. Porky. You can follow me on Twitter at Stevenberger. You can also follow me on my personal Twitch.tv account, which I'll probably be going on in about 30 minutes to play some WoW, maybe. I've started playing WoW again since their annual pass because it was a pretty good deal. You get Diablo 3 for free. Instant beta access into the new WoW. But anyway, um, I will have the replay will be uploaded. To our to the Towson YouTube account, which is youtubecom slash SC. And as always, I'm here with like the freeze, aka be the snake. You can't follow me on anything because I told you you don't have those privileges. Go away. And you will never get those privileges. Never. And until next week, adieu.